it's a pleasure for me to present uh, Alexi Kapustian. Uh, so he's a professor in the University of Kiev. Uh, he's a leading researcher in the Institute for Applied System Analysis. And yes, I have to say that he's an expert in the field of multivariate dynamical system and of course and its application to partial and ordinary differential equations and inclusion. Which, which will be the topic of the of the talk, okay? And uh, he has a, a large experience in this field with more than seventy publications in MathCNET. So, uh, so please, I give him the word so I can start. Please. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. And first of all, I will, I I would like to thank the organizers and uh, personally to my good colleague and friend Professor Valero for kind invitation to take part in this seminar. Uh, so uh, let's start and today we are speaking about uh, global attractor theory and applications of this theory to evolutionary systems without uniqueness and to, to impulsive systems. Uh, so this lecture uh, consists of four parts. Uh, in the first part, uh, I recall some basic notions and constructions from classical theory of global attractors, uh, plus some applications to, uh, for example, to reaction diffusion equations with uh, smooth uh, nonlinear term and after that we will discuss multivariate case so the case when uh, when the solution operator is multivariate and uh, we have additional problems how to deal with this uh, with this object and uh, after that we will see how uh, the uh, how the abstract multivariate approach uh, works uh, for reaction diffusion equation uh, with non-smooth interaction function. And the final part will be devoted to impulsive dynamical system. This is uh, uh, unusual, in fact, unusual from the classical point of view uh, object for investigation. And we will see how the uh, Classical theory of global attractor can be can be adopted for the impulsive case. Uh, so let's start. Let's start with classical theory of global attractors. Uh, the general uh, uh, scheme is the following: We have evolution problem one, autonomous evolution problem one, with initial data two. So H is H is a phase space. And of course, if we consider partial differential equation, that this uh, age, uh, uh, this phase space is infinite dimensional space. And uh, in the sequel, we assume that this space is uh, some normal space, Banach space, in fact. So we will assume that H is a Banach space. And uh, for this problem, one, two, uh, we assume that for every initial data U0 from H, there exists a unique solution, for example, in weak, K, in weak sense of this problem. And this solution belongs to the space H for every uh, value of T bigger than zero. And then the classical dynamical system V can be constructed uh, with the help of the uh, formula three. So V T U zero equals U of T where U is a is a unique solution of our problem starting from U0. Uh, the central object, the central object in qualitative theory of uh, dynamical system is omega limit set. He is omega limit set uh, under rather general assumptions. Uh, even in infinite dimensional case, omega limit set is non-empty, uh, compact, connected, and invariant and attracts u0 so omega limit set of u0 attracts u0 with the help of this uh, limit equality uh, so if we want to to speak about uh, uh, 
some object which uh, which can describe the 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 global the global limit behavior of our system we have two can candidates in fact the first candidate is a compact invariant set a1 uh, which is called uh, which is called pointwise attractor and this attractor is uh, is an attracting set. So A1 attracts every U0 from H, and A1 is a minimal among all such sets. Uh, here and after function dist means uh, Hausdorff semi distance. And the second can candidate, a compact invariant set A2, is called global attractor if it attracts. Uh, points from the phase space, but uniformly, uniformly with respect to bounded initial data and is a minimal among all such sets. Of course, A2 is wider than A1. And the difference between these two objects, uh, we can see on this picture, for example, here is two dimensional, two dimensional ordinary, ordinary differential equation system. And his dissipative system, and uh, uh, this system has three uh, unstable equilibrium O1, O2, and the origin O. And these eight curves, these eight curves, in, in fact, consist of two homoclinic uh, orbits, uh, which described by this equation, C equals zero. And so the pointwise attractor, pointwise attractor, consists of these three points and these eight curves, and that's all. But global attractor, global attractor, in fact, consists of all points inside these eight curves. So all these, all these points belongs to global attractor. So global attractor is a larger object than pointwise attractor. So what the reason? To consider global attractor instead of a pointwise pointwise attractor, because pointwise attractor, in fact, is a, is a, is a, just a union of all omega limit sets. So it's quite natural object. But unfortunately, pointwise attractor, so the simple union of all omega limit sets, is not connected and is not stable. It's easy to see even in this uh, picture, but we will see it later. And the global attractor, global attractor, under rather general assumptions, is a connected, stable subset of the phase space. So from, from the uh, topological point of view, from the point of view of uh, dynamical system, global attractor is, uh, is, is more appropriate object for investigation. So this is the precise definition. This is the precise definition. What does it mean global attractor? So a compact set A is called global attractor of dynamical system V if global if A is invariant set and it's uniformly attracting set. Uh, it's easy to to, to see that uh, if global attractor exists, then it's unique and it's maximal among all bounded invariant sets and minimal among all uh, closed uniformly attracting sets. Among other questions, among other questions, I want to underline the following one about global attractor. So the existence and topological properties of global attractor. Of course, this is the, the, the main question, the first question. And after that, we should investigate structural properties of global attractor and regularity of global attractor. Regularity means that if we consider the functional phase space, our phase space in, is infinite dimensional, so it consists of functions. So as a rule, as a rule, global attractor consists of more regular functions than the phase space. And the final question is about dimensionality of global attractor. So let's briefly discuss all these questions and uh, uh, an abstract setting, at least. Uh, so the existence theorem. The, ex the existence theorem is uh, 
is the following. Assume that dynamical system V possesses the following properties. Continuity, so this map uh, V with respect to the second variable, with respect to variable U, must be continuous. Uh, dissipativity, uh, so uh, there exists a bounded set B0 uh, called absorbing set. So there exists absorbing set B0 that absorbs all bounded subsets. And asymptotically compactness. Asymptotically compactness means that the limit behavior of our system becomes, becomes compact. So for every bounded B, there exists a compact set K, maybe depending on P, such that this V T B K tends to zero as T tends to infinity. So the bounded subsets uh, for large time becomes closer and closer to, to some compact set. And if all these assumptions uh, hold, then the set A equals omega from B0 is a global attractor of our dynamical system. And I want to underline that omega of B0 doesn't equal, doesn't equal the union of all omega limit sets of U0 where U0 belongs to B0. This is the wider object. And as I said before, as I said before, if we introduce the notion of uh, stability, this is a classical stability in Lyapunov sense. What does it mean that the compact invariant set M is uh, stable? And then it turns out that uh, without any additional assumptions, without any additional assumptions, uh, only uh, under assumptions of existence theorem, our global attractor will be connected set. And if uh, this map is continuous with respect to both variables, uh, T and U, then uh, our global attractor is stable. So global attractor is connected and stable subsets of the phase space. And uh, to, uh, if, if we want to speak about structure of global attractor, so we should introduce the notion of complete trajectory or orbit. So I said gamma, uh, to consist of all uh, points u of s where u is continuous. Sorry, it must be right there. So u is continuous function, u is continuous function, and the set gamma consisting of all points u of s where s uh, uh, belongs to the set of real numbers. So this set gamma is called complete trajectory if the following equality takes place for all t bigger than zero and for all s, real s v t u s equals u t plus s. So something like semi group property along the trajectory. And the first structural, uh, first, uh, structural theorem claims that if global attractor exists, then it consists of bounded complete trajectories. In fact, it consists of points uh, which uh, lie on bounded complete trajectories. And uh, the other step, the next step is to specify, is to specify what kind of complete trajectories uh, belongs to global attractor. So uh, let M be a set of all stationary points of dynamical system. So it means that N is a set of stationary solutions, in fact, of our evolutionary problem. And we introduce the unstable set, unstable set emanating from the set N. This unstable set, W of N, consists of all points Z, such that there exists a complete trajectory gamma uh, through this point Z, such that uh, this UTN tends to zero as T tends to minus infinity. So that's why W of N, so this unstable set emanating from N. And, uh, and after that, uh, we should introduce also the notion of Laplace functions. So function phi, uh, define it on some subset X, is called Laplace function of dynamical system V on this set X. 
if f is continuous function. And the second uh, assumption is uh, that the function phi must be non-increasing along every trajectory. And the third assumption is that if uh, phi of z equals phi of v t z, then uh, for some t, for some uh, moment of time t, then z is a stationary point of phi. So, and the second structural theorem guarantees that if uh, dynamical system V possesses global attractor A, and there exists a Lyapunov function on the global attractor A, then the global attractor, in fact, uh, uh, equals to unstable set emanating from the set of stationary points. And this case is called gradient case. So it means that our system is gradient system. And furthermore, if the map V is continuous with, this, with respect to both variables and the set N is discrete, then the structure of A is particularly clear. In fact, A consists of stationary points and a complete orbit joining these points, and that's all. Uh, the, final, the final characteristic of global attractor is uh, dimensionality. Fractal dimension A is a definition. So for a compact subset of H, fractal dimension is the upper limit of this ratio where n m epsilon is a minimal number of closed balls of radius epsilon, which cover the set n. Uh, the main advantage of this definition of this notion is uh, the following fact. So it's known that if dimension of, of the set m is finite, then this set is homeomorphic to some subset of Euclidean space Rd with sufficiently large d. In other words, it means that if the fractal dimension or fractal dimension of uh, of this of our particular set M is finite, then um, this set can be described with uh, with the help of the finite number of parameters. So this is very important. So the, this this theorem, this abstract theorem, claims that if for our global attractor A, there exists a projector P, finite dimensional projector, uh, such that uh, the, the following two inequalities take place. The first one, consider the projector of, uh, of V, and the second one, to consider the, the I minus projector. So, and, and this inequality, in fact, requires that the I minus P uh, and V must be must be contraction map. So because delta between zero and one. So if these two properties uh, hold, then uh, the fractal dimension of A is finite and can be bounded with the, uh, by this number by this number. So now let's uh, let's see uh, how it works in very uh, particular case for reaction diffusion equation with uh, smooth um, non-linear function or interaction function f. So let's consider this is the parabolic, uh, our parabolic uh, equation. Uh, omega is a bounded domain and u of tx is a known function. And non-linear f is, uh, is uh, assumed to be smooth, so from C1. And satisfy the following uh, sign and gross assumptions. Uh, 10. And this is the sign and gross assumptions. And additionally, additionally, assume that derivative of f less or equals than L, this bold L. Uh, I want to underline this assumption because this assumption guarantees the uniqueness of solution of this problem. As an example, we can consider chaffer infant equation. Beta u minus u cube. All conditions will be satisfied with p equals 4. In this case, so this is the simple, the simple 
example. And uh, if we uh, define a weak solution of this problem, a weak solution is a function from this class L2, 0, T, 0, 1, intersect LP, uh, 0, T, LP, omega. T, uh, T, capital T is the final moment of time. And uh, U is a weak solution, is uh, for every test function V, the following, the following uh, equality takes place, uh, where uh, norm, sign of norm, and scalar product without indexes are the norm and scalar product in L2. So it's known, it's easy to, to, to prove with the help of Galorkian approximation that for every u0, for, for every initial function u0 from the phase space h equals L2, and for every moment of time t, there exists a unique solution of our problem with these initial conditions. And so just uh, for because of arbitrary choice of capital T, we can speak about global resolvability. So we can speak, uh, we can say that U is a global solution. So U is defined on the whole interval from zero to infinity with values in L2. And it can be proved that U is continuous function. So we can define dynamical system V according to this uh, standard uh, rule, so vt u0 equals ut, where u is our solution, starting from u0, and uh, here is a list of properties which can be derived uh, from our equation. So the first one is continuity, how we can prove continuity, here is uh, a consequence of this inequality. Uh, the second one is dissipativity. He is uh, a priori estimates like that. The, uh, the third one is asymptotic compactness. And he is the sign of gradient. So this is the norm in, uh, in the space H01. And H01, as you know, uh, compactly embedded in L2. So he is uh, uh, estimates which, uh, which guarantees uh, some compact behavior of our system. And regularity, in fact, uh, uh, is a Lepinov type function for our system. Define it on this space. And on this space, this function is continuous function. So I want to, I want to underline the presence of this constant, constant from this uh, assumption L, bolt L. So the presence of this constant here, here, and here. So it's it's important, it's important that this, this assumption plays uh, an important role in, 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 in this consideration, in this classical consideration. Uh, so after that, this theorem guarantees uh, that uh, our dynamical system V possesses connected stable global attractor A, which is compact in, in the sobolic space H2, so it consists of more regular functions, and which is uh, attracting set in, uh, uh, with respect to topology in H01. So it attracts all bounded subsets from L2, but in topology of H01. And uh, A is a gradient, uh, has gradient structure and has a uh, finite uh, Fractal dimension. So this is the all. Uh, this uh, is a complete uh, uh, collection of properties concerning global attractor. And now, here is a, here is a short list of monographs devoted to the subject. You see many, many, many famous uh, families and authors, which. Uh, which uh, wrote about uh, about this uh, this uh, uh, this object like global attraction. So now let's consider multivalued keys. What uh, I I mean by multivalued keys, I mean that uh, the case when the Cauchy problem, so our initial value problem, has more than one solution. Has more than one solution. And uh, surprisingly, 
there are many problems, uh, naturally appeared in applications, which leads to this uh, difficulty, to this problem, so lack of uniqueness. Um, maybe we can divide this, uh, this uh, uh, amount of problems into two classes, into two big classes. So the first class is evolution inclusions. So he is uh, an evolution object with multi-valued uh, right-hand part, like evolution variational inequalities, like control problems, like evolution equations, but with discontinuous uh, nonlinear functions. And the second class is evolution equation, uh, but uh, for which uniqueness are not known or uh, or fail, like three-dimensional Navier Stokes systems or multi-dimensional evolution system or evolution equation with non-smooth interaction functions. So let's uh, briefly discuss all these case. So it's just uh, an, uh, a general, a general um, view of uh, evolutionary uh, of evolution inclusions in Banach space. He is some diff Subdifferential map and his multivalued uh, map F. And for example, if we consider evolution variational inequalities like that one, so his, uh, his inequality in the boundary, and this inequality in the boundary leads to the problem like 18 with appropriate choice of field. This is the first example. And the second example is the control problems. So if we have uh, control parameters in the right-hand part of our equation, and we consider the union of, over all these controls, uh, we consider union over all these problems, uh, all these controls, so we obtain multi-valued F. And we consider, and we consider instead of uh, the collection of problems with uh, particular controls, we can consider the whole uh, evolution in inclusion. And this, this third example is the evolution equation, but if f is a discontinuous function. So if f is a, is a discontinuous function, then this leads us to the problem like 18. If we uh, consider the convex hole of, uh, at, at, that point, uh, at the point of discontinuous, if we consider the convex hole at the point of discontinuity. And what about evolutionary equations without units? Maybe the most uh, famous example is 3D Navier-Stock system. The situation uh, with this system uh, is the following. We consider this equation, this system, in fact, this is three-dimensional system with respect to uh, V, three-dimensional vector of uh, velocities and uh, P is a pressure. And it's known that for every V, zero from the specially constructed phase space H, uh, there exists at least one globally defined weak solution. But there is no result about uniqueness in this graph and no chance to, to obtain such result. The next example is multidimensional systems like lot cover system with diffusion. For example, in bounded domain, is uh, just a polynomial uh, right-hand path, but it's known that for every initial data u0 from the phase space H, there exists at least one globally defined weak solution, no problem. But uniqueness is proved only for initial data from uh, very small uh, invariant region. CI uh, are small numbers, in fact. And for example, and the last example is the reaction diffusion equation with uh, uh, with uh, non-smooth interaction function. So if we consider the same reaction diffusion equation, but with uh, no assumption on the derivative of it, so. We assume only that f is continuous function and impose uh, gross and uh, sign assumptions. 
then for example, this function, if you satisfy all these properties, so it's known, it can be proved that for every initial data from the phase space L2, there exists at least one globally defined weak solution. But for some initial data, non-uniqueness is proved, in fact. So we can construct many solutions, many solutions starting from the same initial data. So it's the case of non-uniqueness. And so the classical approach, uh, classical uh, approach uh, cannot be applied directly. So how looks, uh, how, uh, what should we do in this multivalued approach? So we, the general scheme is the following. We have our autonomous evolutionary problem and uh, for define it on the phase space age. And we assume that our problem is globally resolvable, but not necessary uniqueness. So our solution, for every initial data solution exists, exists globally, but uh, maybe not unique. And then we can construct, instead of single-valued classical dynamical system, we can construct multi-valued dy dynamical system, or MCME flow for short, G. Uh, and this G looks like that, like that. So G T U zero consists of all values of ut where u is a solution of our problem from some class i want to underline this from some class because this is the one of main problems the choice of the class of solutions because in many cases in many cases we uh, uh, we know nothing about all solutions and we know something all uh, only on this or about solutions from some class, for example, constructed with the help of Galerkin appro approximation. So the main problems in this approach is the first of all the choice of class of solution here, uh, the lack of good a priori estimates. The lack of good a priori estimates means that. Uh, we have some problems if, for example, in this case, F has no derivatives. So we have uh, only a, a small number of estimates. And the third one, the third problem is the topological properties of the set of solutions of uh, the Cauchy problem. In fact, in, uh, in this uh, situation, we face with the necessity to, to uh, involve uh, set valued analysis. So, because this is the set valued map, multi valued or set valued, this is the, the same, but we need set valued analysis for the analysis of uh, our problem. And it, uh, of course, the, the, main, the main problem is, in, is an investigation of characteristics of global attraction. So, we need to adopt. We need to adopt the main notions of classical theory for our multi case. And it can be done. It can be done, in fact. So it can be done. And uh, many years ago, not many, but <laughs> years ago. So this is the definition, the precise def the definition of multi semi flow. So G is a multivalued semi-flow if we have this uh, semi-group property uh, in sense of embedding. And if, uh, if we have equality here, then uh, G is called, is called strict M semi-flow. And the compact set theta is said to be global attractor of M semi-flow G if theta is semi-invariant and for every bounded B, GTB, this GTB theta tends to zero as T tends to infinity. So theta is a uniformly attracting set. Semi-invariant, uniformly attracting set. Of course, such object, if it exists, is unique and uh, has some properties topological, but uh, I want to, I want to, 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 
to pay attention on this fact that instead of if we have about uh, the case of non-uniqueness in this Cauchy problem, so we cannot expect we cannot expect continuous dependence on initial data in classical sense. Because instead of one trajectory, we have the set of trajectories. But we can uh, we can uh, use the analogous of continuous dependence, and this analogous is called upper semi-continuity property. So a multi-valued map F is called upper semi-continuous. If for any neighborhood U of F of X0, there exists delta such that for every x of or delta from x0 f of x uh, is a part of u this is the multi-valued analog of uh, continuity of continuity one of the analogs of continuity and this example this simple example uh, shows that upper semi-continuous multi-valued map uh, may uh, may have no continuous selectors. May have no continuous selectors, and it means that multivaluate approach is not a simple union of single valued approaches. So it's uh, it's uh, it uh, multivaluate approach requires some some uh, some special tricks. Uh, so the existence of what we can uh, claim about existence of global attractor and uh, this is existence so let's assume that our mc flow our mc flow is uh, can, is upper semi continuous with respect to second variable uh, dissipative so there exists a, an absorbing set b0 and asymptotically compact in the following sense so for every Tn tends to infinity, every sequence Cn from G Tn B must be pre-compact in H. If this property holds, then the set theta equals omega of B0, is the same situation as in a single valid case. So this set is global attractor of M semiflow G. And moreover, if the semiflow G is strict, then theta is invariant. Strictly invariant set. Again, uh, without any additional assumptions, oh no, slightly, slightly uh, additional assumptions, some additional assumptions, but not very, uh, very restrictive. Uh, we uh, can prove that a global attractor is a connected and stable subset of the phase space. So if uh, in any case, our global attractor is uh, is connected, and if the graph of multi of multivariate semiflow G is uh, compact in some sense, so the following system of uh, limits takes place, then the global attractor is uh, stable. Is a stable set. So global attractor, if it exists under other general assumptions are connected and stable subsets of the phase space. And if we want to speak about, if you want to speak about uh, structure of global attractor, uh, first of all, we, uh, we must impose the structural properties on our semi-flow G. So let's assume that we have a set K of continuous maps phi such that uh, for every x of h there exists at least one phi starting from x the shift of phi uh, belongs to k for every phi from k and uh, some analogs of uh, continuity uh, with respect to initial data takes place in fact in applications the set k uh, generated by, is generated by the set of uh, solutions of particular problems. So the set K is a set of solutions. Uh, and under these assumptions, if we consider multivalued semiflow G according to this formula, then G is in fact a multivalued semiflow. And for such a semiflow, we can speak about 
structure globally trapped. Uh, in fact, we can introduce the notion of complete trajectory through this embedding. And of course, if uh, our assumptions K1 and K2 hold, then any complete trajectory satisfy the classical uh, property characterizing the complete trajectory. So, and uh, the structural theorem, structural theorem guarantees that if we assume that assumptions K1 and K2 and K3 hold and M semi-flow possesses a global attractor theta, then theta consists of points lying lies on a, a bounded complete trajectories. Uh, let's consider let's consider application of this construction to, to reaction diffu diffusion equation uh, to reaction diffusion equation with non-smooth interaction function. So we assume that F satisfy the sign and growth uh, assumptions, but without any inequalities on derivatives. So this is the definition of weak solutions, so without any changes with a single valued case. And um, it can be proved that for every U0 from the phase space L2, there exists at least one weak solution. This weak solution exists globally and belongs to the space of continuous functions. But uniqueness is not guaranteed. And a uh, very interesting fact that without any additional assumptions on F, one can construct an example of equation like that one, which has point of non-uniqueness of Cauchy problem. And these points are in fact stationary solutions of our problem. So these points must belong to global attractor and we cannot avoid multivalued approach. So, Mm, what about structure of global attractor? So let's let K be the set of all weak solutions of our problem. Then K satisfy all required assumptions, K1, K2, K3, and we can construct M semi-flow G with the help of uh, this uh, collection of weak solutions, G T U0. And for this M semi-flow, the following theorem can be proved that are only under conditions 27, so only under growth and sign assumptions without any additional assumptions. Uh, our uh, MCM flow G has an invariant connected and stable global attractor theta, and this attractor consists of bounded complete trajectories. Uh, in general case, in fact, Gradient structure of theta is an open problem. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not true, but in some special cases, in some special cases, uh, the gradient structure was proved. So we assume that uh, dimensional of omega less or equal than three, and the p less or equal than four. So we can uh, consider cubic nonlinearity sphere cubic nonlinearity sphere so if we assume that uh, the dimension of omega uh, less than three or equal than three and p less or equal than four then we can claim that global attractor theta is a compact set in h01 so it consists of more regular function than the phase space a2 and it, uh, it uh, theta is an uniformly attracting set uh, in topology H01. So it attracts all bounded subsets from L2, but uh, in H01 norm. And finally, theta has gradient structure. So it consists of bounded complete trajectories emanating from the set of stationary solutions. Hey, the, almost complete, almost complete a collection of properties, which uh, as we saw 
uh, hold uh, in a single valid case. So now we can prove that it also holds for uh, multi valid case. And except of dimensionality, what about dimensionality? And unfortunately, we cannot expect we uh, the finite dimension the finite dimension cannot be expected in uh, uh, non smooth case why well, for example let's consider the function fk equals minus uq plus sine ku and k is a arbitrary large number but in fact growth and sine conditions uh, take place for a constant with which which do not depend on k so we can assume we can speak about global attractor of reaction diffusion equation with some with this function fk and uh, gk is the corresponding uh, dynamical system in this case for every key k for every k uh, fk is a smooth function so uh, we have single value dynamical system and if we consider zero uh, as a stationary solution of our problem then it turns out that uh, the unstable set emanating from zero of course it must belong to our global attractor theta k but it can be proved that dimension of this I mean, of this unstable manifold equals nk and this nk tends to infinity as k tends to infinity so in any case dimension fractal dimension of our global attractor theta k bigger or equals than nk and for every k uh, if we increase uh, the number of key that that we obtain that uh, global attractor uh, is uh, has a, a global attractor um, uh, is 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 not finite dimension, and uh, I want to underline that in this situation the derivative of f k at point zero equals k, so derivative at the stationary point tends to is unbound is unbounded so this is the reason why we cannot we cannot speak about uh, finite dimensionality of global attractor in uh, our multi non-smooth case and so let's uh, the final part of of this lecture uh, is devoted to impulsive systems what does it mean impulsive dynamical system and what difficulties we face in this case so impulsive system is an autonomous system, autonomous system like that one, but the phase point may have jumps when uh, this phase point uh, reaches uh, some fixed subset M of the phase space. So in fact, uh, our, uh, our system consists of evolutionary equation plus uh, the jump law, the jump law here is a, uh, I, I is a value of this jump. So is a value of changes of these instant changes. And uh, I, M is called, M is called impulsive set and I is called impulsive map. So assume that uh, uh, the, these impulsive trajectories are right continuous, are right continuous. So, and assume that for every u0 from h, there exists a unique globally defined right continuous solution of our problem. Uh, what the difficulties, what the problem with this system? The first and the main problem is that we have no continuous dependence on initial data in this case. There is no result about continuous dependence on initial data in impulsive dynamical system. So we cannot expect that omega limit set is invariant. So omega limit set in generally is not invariant. So we cannot expect the property of invariance from global attractor. So we cannot define global attractor itself because the requirement of invariance 
is a part of definition of local effects. So this is a problem. The problem of construction of omega, not in, const, in construction, but the, pro, the problem in properties of omega limit set. Omega limit set depends on impulsive parameters M and I. So the classical dynamical system theory cannot be applied in this case. And we need to adopt, to adopt some results if we want to obtain, if we want to obtain some limit dynamic in terms of attractions. Uh, uh, this is the classical example. This is the classical example on this picture uh, about unusual behavior of dynamical system, impulsive dynamical system. So let's consider two dimensional ordinary differential equation system. Here is a linear case, linear system, which has a focus uh, at the origin. Here is a focus, but we have impulsive map M and uh, they set m bar so and our trajectory behaves like that so when the trajectory reaches the set m then it jumps to a new position i of u yes on the circle m bar along the radius along the radius so they move and after reaching the set M, they jumps into a new position uh, below the radius. So, and it's interesting that if uh, this number is not rational, if this number is not rational, uh, then uh, uh, the trajectory, uh, every trajectory is dense in this disk. And in fact, omega limit set of this planar system is a whole disk between a uh, uh, sphere of radius R1 and R2. The whole disk is an omega limit set. And other very important, uh, very important not properties, but uh, difficulties in this case, and that this set, this omega limit set, this disk is not invariant. Because if we start from this point, from the point, uh, uh, of M, for example, this one, yes? If we start here, then without any jumps, we, uh, we will tend to, to, to the origin, to the uh, point zero. So our disk is not invariant. Uh, but uh, in spite of these difficulties, it's possible to construct, it's possible to construct impulsive dynamical system and it was done. So the construction looks like that. We have V, we have V, a classical continuous dynamical system generated by our evolution equation. Yes. And we have a set M, which is our impulsive set, and we have map I, which is our uh, impulsive map. And he's two assumptions, one and two, which allows us to claim that our trajectory does not stick on, on M, does not stick on M. And also, also we must define, we must introduce the function phi of X. This is the moment of time. This is the first moment of time when our trajectory which start from the point X reaches the set M. So this is the first moment of intersection of trajectory of dynamical system V, uh, the set M. So then the construction looks like that. If uh, our trajectory is not impulsive, so it has no jumps, then this our impulsive trajectory V bar coincide with non-impulsive trajectory V, no problem. But if we have impulsive moments and phi of X is the first moment, this is the first uh, jump, uh, then V bar looks like that. V bar TX equals V TX if T strictly less than this moment of time, the moment of jumps. And at this moment of time, 
we uh, write here a new position, a new position of our dynamical system. Uh, and after that, considering x1 plus as an initial point, we can repeat this construction and uh, finally obtain the following formula. Following, obtain the following formula for V bar. V bar is our uh, impulsive dynamical system. Uh, here is a, we have finite or infinite number of impulsive points and moments and corresponding moments of time, Tm. And uh, if we assume that every V bar is defined on the on the uh, uh, is the is is defined globally. So it means that either number of impulsive points are finite or this series is convergent. Okay. So if we assume that V bar is defined globally, then without any problem we can prove that V bar in fact is a semi-flow, is a dynamical system. So the semi-group property holds. But of course, we cannot speak about continuity in any in in any sense. Uh, and so we need to adopt we need to adopt uh, the notion of global attraction. And we use we can use here the well known notion of uniform attraction. So what does it mean uniform attraction? A compact set is called uniform attraction of our dynamical system V bar if. A is uniformly attracting set, and instead of invariance, we can require minimality property. So A is a minimal among all closed uniformly attracting sets. Of course, if dynamical system has a classical global attractor A prime, that A equals A prime, no problem. But uh, and for uh, uniform attractor, we have. Uh, a criterion, in fact, uh, dynamical system V bar has uniform attractor if and only if it's asymptotically compact. And this attractor uh, is given by the following formula. Uh, so we have some basis, some basis to, to prove uh, the existence of uniform attractor in particular, in particular uh, impulsive system. But we face with unexpected problems here. Let's consider the very trivial linear case. Let's consider linear case. Uh, here is a parabolic linear uh, problem. Uh, and if we uh, use the Fourier methods, then we have the precise formula of solution. And we see from these estimates Hey, is lambda one from the Poincaré inequality. So uh, we see from these estimates that uh, this problem has global attractor. This global attractor is uh, one point, zero point, and this zero point in exponentially attracting point. Exponentially attracting point. So the ideal situation in this case. But if we introduce the impulsive set M, like a sphere of radius epsilon for sufficiently small epsilon. And it introduces the impulsive map I, just a, uh, just a map, just a multiplier of one plus mu, is the simplest variant of impulsive map. So then we can prove that for every epsilon and mu, for sufficiently small epsilon and mu, the problem, this problem with this simple impulsive parameters generates impulsive dynamical system V bar without any problem. All assumptions uh, are satisfied and this system will be dissipative, but uh, this system doesn't possess uniform attractor. So this is an example when uh, uniform attractor doesn't exist. Why? Just because too many, too many impulsive points on this sphere. Too many impulsive points. So the sphere is not a good candidate for uh, for impulsive for impulsive set, 
And instead of sphere, we can consider hyperplane, hyperplane like that one. So this is the set M. Here's a Fourier coefficients, and we fix the first P Fourier coefficients and construct hyperplane with the help of these coefficients. Hyperplane uh, sum I from one to P alpha I C I equals A. Here's our impulsive map. Uh, our impulsive set and uh, M prime is a set of images uh, and our impulsive uh, map I acts from M to M prime. And uh, this impulsive map I change only this first P coordinates. Oh, just an example. For example, the simplest example is uh, when uh, I uh, just an increase, uh, just uh, uh, an increase in, in one plus mu times the first uh, p coordinates. Uh, here is a one-dimensional example. Here is one-dimensional example. This is the uh, the very simple example when uh, only first coordinate undergoes undergoes uh, impulsive effects. Only first coordinate. So the impulsive set M is uh, the scalar product y c1 equals a and uh, the impulsive uh, map i increase this coordinate in one plus mu times that's all this is the simple case mm, here is a two-dimensional case uh, one variant and here is two-dimensional case two uh, other variant how it can be it's i think Many, many, many invariants, uh, many variants how the impulsive map I can be act. Uh, but uh, in general case, I can prove that this, this, uh, this, uh, just a moment, this evolution problem with uh, these impulsive parameters generates impulsive dynamical system D bar which has uniform attractor and this attractor can be calculated in fact for this attractor the precise formula can be found uh, of course this is the simple uh, not simple but just a calculation because we have a precise formula for solution so no problem to calculate how this solution behave uh, as t tends to infinity but uh, from this formula, we can see that uh, this attractor A is not invariant, is not invariant. And the second uh, very important, uh, very important uh, step is that this formula preserves under small perturbations of uh, our right part of differential equation. So in fact, the following result uh, takes place. If we consider weakly nonlinear problem, is epsilon is a small parameter, but f is a is nonlinear function, continuous and bounded, but nonlinear function. And uh, if m and i are the same uh, impulsive parameter, so m is a hyperplane and i mm, acts only on the first p coordinates, then for sufficiently small epsilon it can be proved that uh, this problem generates impulsive dynamical system D epsilon bar, and this system has uniform attractor A epsilon, and this attractor tends to, tends to this uh, guy as uh, epsilon tends to zero. And uh, so a few words about invariance. So as we saw, uh, our uniform attractor is not invariant, in fact. For example, let's consider this, uh, the, the, uh, this linear problem with the uh, impulsive parameter which touch upon only the first coordinates. And uh, so this is a global attractor in linear case. And uh, from this uh, formula, we can see that uh, in any... Uh, just a sorry, it's uh, wait, I mean this problem. Oh, here's one. So this example, uh, 
so we have uh, our parabolic problem plus uh, impulsive parameters and he is our global attractor a uh, not global but uniform attractor a and it's easy to see that a is not invariant in any case so a is not negatively invariant a is not positively invariant uh, the reason is that this attractor has a non-empty intersection with the impulsive map M. And the expected, and we can expect his expected result, is a hypothesis, something like that, that if we uh, consider A without M, so our uniform attractor, but without impulsive map, then A without M will be invariant. And in fact, this is true. This is true for, uh, for uh, many situations, for many situations, um, like, like that one, for example, he's uh, one of the possible theorems uh, devoted to this subject, how to prove invariance of A without M. But you see that these theorems involves, involves this function S. And this function S is a function which describes the first moment of jump of trajectory starting from X. So this is a rather abstract object and it's in applications, in real applications, it's rather difficult to analyze this function. This function. But uh, for, for this particular case, it's possible and uh, it can be proved that for sufficiently small epsilon this reaction diffusion uh, equation with uh, um, impulsive parameters m and i uh, only requirement is that this impulsive map should be continuous should be continuous so this is the only one additional requirement and for this uh, for these conditions we can claim that uh, our uniform attractor a, a epsilon has an invariant non-impulsive part. So this guy is a candidate for classical global attractor for this problem. Okay, thank you, Alexei, for the nice uh, lecture. Um, okay, I have a, a question about the impulsive systems because, uh, of course, in this case, the situation is much more complicated, even invariance is, is, is not true in general but only with, the, with this, this set no without m but uh, what about the structure of the tractor is it possible to say something or are there any results in this direction or this is very difficult uh you know the uh, the group of scientists uh, in just a moment uh, Bonotto, Bonotto, Professor Bonotto and others from Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, in fact, they had, they had some results about, uh, about uh, structure of attractor, but uh, to prove this result, they need to impose very, very restricted uh, assumptions on system itself. So they need to, they need to, the matter is uh, how to analyze this function S of X. So the, the first moment of intersection, this is the key moment, how to analyze this function. If we impose some good assumptions on this function, we can construct, we can construct the classical theory, the classical theory. But but uh, these assumptions can uh, can uh, can fail in many situations. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, such results exist exist okay. about structure of global attractor in a, in a impulsive case. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attention, colleagues. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye.